Hey everyone, and this is Mr. Wistar again. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to understand the manual pages in the Java API. So, we're going to talk about um, what the API means, and then we're going to talk about how to find the page for a class that you're looking for, and then we're going to unpack and talk a little bit about each of the major sections of a class description page. So what is API? Uh, API is an acronym which stands for Application Programming Interface and in general that just means a set of classes that allow you to perform some task. When we talk about the Java API we're talking about all of the predefined classes that come with Java. So any of the classes that you've been using for the labs in this program that you've had to import, those are all examples of classes that are part of the Java API. And in order to use those classes, you need to be able to understand how they work. And to do that, you need to read the instruction manual. And that's where all of those web pages that are part of the Java um, quick reference come in handy. And believe it or not, all of those web pages were created using the comments that you all have seen uh, in the balloon lab uh, where they start with slash star star and they end with star slash. Those are called javadoc comments and those are what get transformed into the documentation that you see on the web. So how do you find a class that you're looking for in the Java API? The easiest way to do it is to open up the entire API page and then use whatever uh, keyword search tool is built into the web browser that you happen to be using and then you can find that class's name in the directory on the left hand side and click on its name to open up its page so let's see an example of how to do that um, if we go to the Java uh, API uh, you'll uh, come to this sort of central page here you remember you can get to this by using Blueboard from the external links page and now let's just say we were looking for the class called number format. Um, in order to get to that, since I'm in Chrome, I'm going to hit Command F for find, and I'm going to start typing number format and see what matches. Hey, look at it. It's right over here. Here is our directory of classes. Here is, are the classes that match, and it turns out that this is the one we want. So we click that button, and each page is going to show up here. Now let's talk about what the different parts of a class's uh, page are in the Java API. The first section that you'll come to is the section on top and that contains what we would call the class description. It contains a uh, narrative description of the purpose of the class. Sometimes there's some uh, description of how to use it depending on how complicated it is. And the other really important thing that it includes is it tells you which library the class is in and which classes it, it, it inherits from. We don't really have to worry about inheritance right now, but we'll get to inheritance later on in this class. But we do need to worry about what library it's from so that we know how to import it. So for example, in the case of number format, try that again. <clears throat> in the case of number format, I can actually see right above the name of the class this thing java.txt. Anytime you see something other than java.lang, it should tell you that you have to import the class. In this case, we would have to write a statement like import java.text.number format. Here's the inheritance hierarchy, which again, like I said, we're not really going to worry about right now, but it'll come in later when we start talking about inheritance. And then here's that narrative description that I was talking about that explains to us how the class works. Looks like this class is pretty complicated. Actually, it's really not that tough. You're going to use it in the lab for this uh, standard. What's the next section? Next section is what we call the field summary. That is the place where all of the class variables for an object of this class are described. Remember that objects in Java consist of two parts, um, fields or variables and methods or behavior. And so for each class variable, you'll see the type of the variable in the column on the left and the name of the variable in the column on the right and a description. In the case of number format um, you will see in the field summary there's not a lot of fields. In fact there aren't really any fields other than constants. If I wanted to find out more about one of these just so we know 
if you click on the name of the uh, of the variable, it'll take you to a more detailed description of what that variable is for. So let's go back. The next section after the field summary, which is probably going to be a little more useful, is the constructor summary. And in this section, it's going to list all the constructors for that class. And it's also going to tell you the parameters for each one of those constructors. That's important because if you remember the lesson on constructors, it's possible for a class to have different constructors that have different sets of parameters. And depending on the one that you use, you can initialize the object very differently. So it's important to find the constructor that you need and understand which parameters it uses and in what order it uses them. In the case of number format, for example, let's take a look. So we scroll down again to underneath field summary, there's uh, the constructor summary. Turns out in this class there's only one constructor and we can see that it doesn't take any parameters. Okay. The last major section of a class's manual page is the method summary. Just like, constructor, just like the constructor summary, this section lists all the other methods which are part of a class. And also, just like um, the constructor summary, the table with the methods has two columns. The column on the left tells you what the return type for the method is, what type of variable of value it returns. And then on the right you'll see the name of each method and the parameters that that method requires in parentheses. And if you click on the name of the method, which is a really good idea most of the time, it'll take you what's called to what's called the method detail. And that's where you'll see a description of the method. It's also where you'll see a description of what each parameter is for and a more detailed description of what the return value means. So we'll take a look at that as an example too. So if we look in the method summary, most of the time when you create a number format object, the first thing you're going to do is, uh, in order to generate it, you're going to call one of these get instance methods. So if I wanted to create a percent instance of number format, for example, I would call its get percent instance method. And the way that you do that is you just say number format foo gets number format dot get percent instance. By clicking on that method, it took me right to the detail for that method. And it tells you, in most cases, if the programmers have done a good job, it'll tell you more detailed description for what the parameters mean and also what the return value means. You can see an example of the return value description right here. And let's see if we can find another method with parameters. So here's an example. I don't know what this method does. I've never used this method. But I can tell that there's a parameter called source and that the purpose of source is a string that you should start parsing. Um, so that's how the method detail works and that's how it's related to the method summary which is further up the page. So remember, <laughs> the purpose of the Java API is to give you a detailed description of how each class in Java that is um, predefined works. You can get there from Blueboard and you can find the class that you're looking for by going to the main page and then using the search feature in your browser to find the name of the class that you're looking for. And each class page has several major sections in common. There's a class description, there's a method summary, uh, sorry, a field summary for all the variables, and then there are constructor summaries and method summaries uh, for the other methods. And remember that clicking on a variable or a method name will take you to a detailed description for that particular field or method. Okay, you're all set.